tracing nested loop exercises. Uh, question number one here, mobile choice. Uh, all we have to do is establish a pattern and then maybe we can short circuit this uh, work and not have to complete all of the tracing. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, uh, we start here with a, an outer loop for loop that uses the loop variable i. It begins uh, with the value 5, which is greater than or equal to 1. So we uh, proceed to the inner for loop, where we have the variable j. It begins with the variable i, the value of the variable i. So 5 is also stored there. And 5 is greater than or equal to 1. So we execute system out print uh, 2 times j minus 1. So in our output window, we are printing 2 times j, which is 10, minus 1, which is 9. And we cycle back up to the uh, top of the inner for loop, j minus minus. j is still greater than or equal to 1. So we system out print. Because this is print and not print ln, whatever we print here will be on the same line as the 9. 2 times j minus 1 is currently 7. We loop it back up, j minus minus. j is uh, still greater than or equal to 1. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5, so a 5 prints. We loop back up, j minus minus. 2 times j minus 1 is now 3. We loop back up, j minus minus. 1 is greater than or equal to 1. So 2 times 1 minus 1 simplifies to 1. We loop back up j minus minus. 0 is not greater than or equal to 1. So we don't execute this anymore. Instead, we drop down to this line of code and print the, uh, the new line. So our blinking cursor goes from here down to here. We hit this curly brace, which loops us back up to the top of the outer for loop, where i minus minus is. So 5 is now uh, decremented to 4, that is the i is now 4. 4 is great, greater than or equal to 1. At this point, we go through the outer for loop again and we uh, reach this inner for loop where j resets and in fact is redeclared to be equal to i. So it's equal to 4. And 4 is greater than or equal to 1. So we execute this line of code again. 2 times j minus 1. Uh, that would be 8 minus 1, 7. 7 prints on a new line. Let's pause here to see if we can rule out any answers. Uh, so far, A and B are still fair game. And so is C. D is ruled out. And E is ruled out. At this point, you might want to guess on the AP exam. At least you have a, a one-third chance of getting this right. Uh, but let's, uh, for the exercise here of this video, let's proceed. Uh, we were we left off right here. We uh, loop back up to this top of the inner for loop, where j minus minus is the 3. 3 is greater than or equal to 1. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5, so 5 prints. We loop back up. We print 3. We loop back up. We print 1, we loop back up, it's 0, 0 uh, false is not greater than or equal to 1, so we're finished with the inner for loop. We print this black line, so we're, uh, our cursor is right here. We hit this curly brace, we loop back up to the very top, i minus minuses, so 3. We hit this inner for loop again from scratch. j gets redeclared as an integer. 
let's set equal to i, which is currently 3. Hopefully you see a pattern now. Uh, at this point, you know the answer is B, because uh, this much of it uh, matches this, and it does not match this because we started with 7 here in the second row and not 9. I'll, I'll leave it for you as an exercise to uh, finish iterating this inner for loop. But as far as the multiple choice question goes, we know the answer is B. Let's look at number two. Number two, we have this double nested for loop. And that's going to be a difficult problem to do in this video because part of my uh, Roman numeral one doesn't show in this page. So I'm going to skip that question and help you with the next question. Okay, number three here. What is the last output when this code segment executes? Well, P begins with one. It is less than six. Q is declared and initialized to one in the body of this while loop, but then we hit the inner while loop and we check to see if Q is less than six, which it is. Q plus equals P. That means uh, change Q to whatever Q plus P is. Uh, that would be two. P plus pluses. We system out print in our output window, P with a blank space or two, and then Q. So two and two prints out on a new line. Uh, we go back up to the top of this while loop. Q is less than six. So we do this again, Q plus equals P. That changes Q to four. P plus pluses. And we system out print P and Q, three and four. Okay, I might see a pattern here, maybe I don't. I proceed back to the top of the while loop. Q plus equals P, that's now seven. Oh, yeah, that's seven. P plus plus is to four. And we system out print the four and the seven. Go back up to the top. Q is not less than six anymore. So we don't execute the inner while loop anymore. We drop down to this uh, curly brace which loops us back up to the outer while loop, checking to see if P is less than six, it is. So we re-declare and reinitialize Q to one. We check to see if one is less than six, which it is. So now we execute this inner while loop all over again. Q plus equals P, uh, that would be five, one plus four is five. P plus pluses, System out print P and Q. Uh, loop back up to the top. Q less than six. Yes, it is. Q plus equals P adds up to 10. P plus pluses. System out print P and Q. Okay, that's one of the wrong answers. We proceed back up to the top. Is Q less than six? No, it's not. So we're finished with that while loop. We hit this curly brace, we loop back up to the top. Is P less than six? No, it's not. So we don't go through the outer loop again. And actually that six and 10 was the correct answer. Number four. Okay, it's cut off by the page. I'm going to skip that question because it's going to be too awkward to trace here in this video. Let's do number five. Oh, now we have to put our thinking cap on and imagine M as some whole number greater than zero. Okay, what is the output when the segment executes? Now we're looking for a pattern here because uh, we, we don't really have numbers. We have formulas here. So let's plug some different numbers in for M and see if we can establish a formula uh, or a pattern of some kind. K always gets initialized to zero. Let's pretend that M is just barely greater than zero. Let's pretend that M is one. This is uh, test case number one. And N is equal to M, so N is also one. While K less than N, while zero is less than one, K plus pluses, 
and minus minuses. We loop back up to the top. And uh, is k less than n? No, it's not. So we system out print k plus n. Zero, uh, 1 plus 0 is, is, uh, is 1. Now this is not a double nested for loop. Uh, it's just a single while loop. It's not a double nested loop. But anyway, let's do this problem on this worksheet. OK, uh, now let's plug in for m a number that's bigger than 1, but not too big, like say, say uh, 3. K is initialized to 0, M is 3 this time, and N is also M, so it's 3. Okay, uh, tracing this loop, K is less than N, 0 is less than 3, so we K plus plus, N minus minus, loop back up the top, is K less than N? Yes, it is, so K plus pluses, N minus minuses, loop back up the top, is K less than N? No, it's not. So we system out print, in this case, k plus n, which is uh, the number 3. OK, uh, do we know the answer yet? The output that we're getting, is it equal to m plus 1 divided by 2? Uh, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. OK, that checks for uh, case 1, uh, m plus 1 divided by 2. 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is uh, 2. OK, that, that doesn't work for, uh, for our, this is actually case 2, I'm sorry. This is case 2, that's case 1. OK, uh, m divided by 2. In this case, 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5, but because of integer division, when you have an int divided by an int, it chops off that 0.5, so really this would be 0 in case 1. So that doesn't work as a formula. Uh, m minus 1. Now here, 1 minus 1 would be 0. That's not the, the output that we got there in uh, case 1, so that's out. d, a value equal to m plus 1. Well, uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. We did not get the output of 2 there, so that's out. A value equal to m. OK, look, m, m. This m for case 2 matches the m. I'm going to go with this answer E. I'm not even going to bother putting in a lucky third value for M, such as like a 6 or, or some higher number. Now, because M was uh, odd here, and it was odd here, it might be a worthy exercise if you had time to uh, trace this code with M originally being uh, a, an even number. But I'm not even going to bother because I, I'm pretty sure the answer is E. Number six makes use of the good old mod operator. OK, another problem where we have to imagine values for n. And uh, right here, we are checking for x being an even number. If it's an even number, this happens. If it's an odd number, this happens. Um, I want to let you do that as an exercise because it's very similar to problem five. Number seven. Number seven, you have to imagine two different numbers there. Um, let's do number seven. Let's see, p is a number greater than zero. Let's imagine p as the number. Uh, I would go with 1, but 1's kind of silly. It's too easy sometimes. I would go with 2, but it's also like a relatively simple number. Let's plug in 3. And Q is bigger than P. And, and 4 could be used, but let's just go with a healthy number like, say, 6. And let's proceed. OK, the outer while loop. Is P less than Q? Yes, it is. So we P plus plus. While P is less than Q, well, 4 is less than 6, so we Q minus minus. We go back up to the top of that inner while loop. We uh, q minus minus again. And now 4 is not less than 4. So we hit this curly brace, which sends us back up to the top of that while loop. Is p less than q? No, it's not. Heck, we just got a false there. And it's the same control expression, so it's always going to be false there. Now we system out print p and q. OK, in this case, the output is 4 with a space and a 4. 
two positive numbers such that p equals q. Well, that's certainly true in this case. Yes, they will always be equal to each other in the end because that's what causes this outer for loop to, to stop. And because p is going up one at a time and not two or three at a time, I don't think it's going to jump over q. I think it's going to land right on q and match. I bet a is the answer. Two zeros is definitely not the answer because I just executed it with these two sample numbers and I did not get two zeros. Two positive numbers such that p is greater than q. No, p was not greater than q in this simple test case, so that's ruled out. Two positive numbers such that p is less than q. No, p was not less than q in this one situation, so that rules d out. And two positive numbers such that p equals q plus 1. Nope, p is not equal to q plus 1, so that's ruled out. A is the final answer. Number 8. Interesting. Uh, weird looking code. Let's trace it. X is some number bigger than 0. Now I had noticed that X is eventually being compared with 100 and uh, 250. So let's go with a healthy number like uh, 99. Let's pretend that X is 99 and is 0. And uh, you know what? I want to let you do this as an exercise. You should trace this code with 99. Maybe you should then trace the code in case number 2 with x being equal to a number over 100, like 101, or maybe even like 120 or something like that. And you should also trace the program with a number that's less than 50, uh, maybe like 43 or something. As long as it's greater than zero, it's a fair game as x. And after you trace this program, this code segment three or four times, you might uh, realize that x that act that n always ends up being one of these four numbers, or n is just plain unknown since you don't know what x is. This is not a loop problem, so I'm not going to trace this as part of this worksheet. Number nine. This is just a single nested for loop. So I'm not going to trace that one. You can do number nine. Number 10. Oh, this is the same question that we had on an earlier uh, exercise. So that's a repeat. 